This tutorial is brought to you by the Department of Performing Arts Technology at the University of Michigan. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to control an object in Quartz Composer from TouchOSC installed on a mobile device. In my case, I'm using TouchOSC on my iPhone and I'm going to send information to Quartz Composer that will control a very simple and basic object. The first thing I need to do is go to my dock and launch Quartz Composer. When Quartz Composer launches, you'll notice that it selects a basic composition. That's what we want for this case. I'm going to select Choose. And you'll notice, too, that there are two windows for Quartz Composer. The main window is this editor, and that's where we're going to do all the work. The second window is the viewer, and that's where we'll see the result of the work that we've done. If you're familiar with other visual programming applications like MaxMSP, for instance, you'll pick up on Quartz Composer fairly quickly. The first thing that we need to do is open the patch library, and I can find that button here in the upper left. One click will open this window, and I'm going to type in the word sphere. S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. And what I find is an object in my library called a 3D sphere. So I'm simply going to drag that sphere directly to my stage or to my editor. Now you might notice as soon as we did that, the viewer now shows a white sphere. Not very exciting. But we're going to do something with that. I'm going to need one more object. And I'm going to type in QC. And you'll notice, in my library, one object comes up. Now, a little bit about this object. If we simply go back to the library and type in OSC, we're going to see several objects. OSC senders, OSC receivers, and the QC OSC object that I just added to my editor. For anything that you do with Touch OSC and Quartz Composer, you'll need to download the QC OSC object from Hexler.net. That's H-E-X-L-E-R.net. There's a small issue with the built-in OSC receiver that continually sends zeros when it updates the last position. So it does not work properly for our application. This is a free download from Hexler and it's really easy to install. He has instructions right on the website. So once we have that in here, we need to customize this a little bit to get it to receive information from my iPhone. I'm going to close my library and with the QC OSC object I'm going to open my patch inspector here in the upper right corner. You'll notice it opens a window and I have three screens or three different sections of this inspector. I can get to them by clicking on the arrows, switching from the arrows, or I can get to them by activating the drop-down menu or I can use the keyboard shortcuts. The one that I want is settings so I'm simply going to go to settings. Now I have a few things that I need to adjust here before this is going to work. The first thing is I need to make sure that my laptop and my mobile device are on the same Wi-Fi network and in this case they are. The next thing I need to do is make sure that my mobile device and this port number both match and I've set my mobile device up on port 2000. So I'm going to type in 2000 and hit tab or return and Quartz Composer is going to take just a second and make sure that that port number is okay. It's not being used by another device and now I'm ready to go. In my custom layout in Touch OSC I've created a few simple controls and I'm only going to use two of them maybe three of them here today. The first thing I have is a toggle and I'm going to activate it or touch it on my device and you'll notice it shows up here automatically. It also gets added here as an outlet or an output from this object. I'm also going to activate fader number one and fader number two. So there are my three controls that I want to use. They've all been added here to the list. They've all been added here to my object. So for the time being, I can close my inspector. 
Now, I need to connect this OSC object and my sphere in order for these things to work. So the first thing I'd like to do is connect or draw the cable from the toggle output to the enable button. And you'll notice here in the viewer that it disappears because my toggle was set to off on my device. If I touch that toggle button, it'll turn the sphere back on. So using that toggle, I can simply turn on, activate, or deactivate my sphere at will. The next thing I'd like to control is fader 1 to control the X position. And the very last thing is the fader 2. And for this one, I'm going to use diameter. So I have three controls, three outputs, connected to three inputs, and I still have my white sphere. If I activate the first fader, I can move it on my x-axis. I can change its diameter, make it grow or shrink, and I can toggle it on and off. Very good. Now, to make something interesting into this sphere. The first thing I need to do is have some sort of graphic or movie or something that's going to fill the sphere. In my case, I'm going to show you how to do it with two different objects. I have a TIFF image that I've taken, and I have a QuickTime movie. I'm simply going to drag across both of them to select them and drag and drop them into my editor. Once com Quartz Composer imports these two items, they will show up as small little objects. Each one of these objects, you'll notice, has one thing in common, and that is an image output. Let's start with the TIFF image. I'm going to draw the cable from the TIFF image output and I'm going to draw it and connect it to the image input on my sphere. And as soon as I let go, you'll notice that it fills the sphere with that image. And so it stays full, and as I rotate it, you can kind of see around the sides, the edges of that sphere, so it is wrapping that TIFF all the way around the sphere. And I can get some interesting things going here with just a couple controls. So if that doesn't do it for you, I can take a QuickTime movie and draw its image output and replace it with the image input on the sphere. You'll notice that the cable that I drew earlier from the TIFF goes away, and now my QuickTime movie is connected to my sphere. And if we look now at the viewer, we can see that movie is playing inside of the sphere. To get a better look at this, I'm going to go to the toolbar here of the viewer and click on full screen. And now I can touch the toggle and turn that movie on or off so I can activate it. I can move it on the Y axis and I can change its diameter all in real time, all very smoothly without dropping any frames or noticing any kind of lag in performance. So I'm going to hit the escape key to get out of full screen and it's really just as simple as that. Now there is one other thing that we can add to this to make it interesting. If we select our QuickTime movie here and then open the inspector again and we're gonna page over again to settings we have a box that says asynchronous mode. If I check this box, we're going to instantly hear the audio coming through from the movie. So what we were just hearing or watching was just the movie with no audio. But now, turn our volume up. I'm going to go back to full screen. And I can adjust its x-axis again. I can play with the zoom, all without dropping frames. Turn it off and turn it back on. And you'll notice it picks up right where it left off. And it's as simple as that.